problem 2.4-1. A cylinder of 6061-T6 aluminum is compressed in a vise. The original length of the cylinder is 2 inches, and the original diameter is 1 inch. The load placed on the cylinder is 25,000 pounds. Determine the new diameter of the cylinder after the load is applied. Assume no friction between vice grips and aluminum cylinder. And some properties are given, including the modulus of elasticity of aluminum, the yield stress of the aluminum, and Poisson's ratio for the aluminum. I will begin the solution to the problem by first finding the original cross-sectional area. For a 1-inch diameter cylinder, the cross-sectional area is 0 0.785 square inches. Now there are several steps to finishing this problem. The first one, we will calculate what the normal stress inside the cylinder is. We calculate the normal stress in the cylinder uh, to be the internal force, which in our case is 25 tips, divided by the cross-sectional area, 0 0.785 square inches. We get 31.8 KSI. And note here, in parentheses, I have a C that stands for the stress in the cylinder is in compression. Now I compare the stress in the cylinder to the yield stress of aluminum that was given. And we see that our actual stress, 31.8 KSI, is less than our yield stress. This is good because in the next step I'm going to use Hooke's Law to calculate strain. And if our actual stress computes, uh, is computed to be greater than yield stress, then Hooke's Law doesn't apply. And we can't finish the problem. Because our actual stress is less than the yield stress, we can go ahead and use Hooke's Law. I have Hooke's Law written as longitudinal strain is equal to stress divided by the modulus of elasticity. And I've called it longitudinal strain here because this is the strain that is occurring in the direction of the force or along its longitudinal axis, the longitudinal axis of the cylinder. Notice also that I put a negative sign on normal stress. Because it's in compression, uh, we put a negative sign to indicate that compression, and that also results in a negative sign on our strain, which makes sense because we expect the cylinder will get shorter under a compressive force. So the sign is important here. Next, I've written the equation for Poisson's ratio, which is given the Greek symbol nu. And Poisson's ratio is equal to negative the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. And this can be written as follows. The lateral strain is equal to negative Poisson's ratio times the longitudinal strain. I solve for the lateral strain to be equal to 1.114 times 10 to the negative third. And I add inches per inch to indicate normal strain. Though I could leave that off. That's optional. Now keep in mind the lateral strain is the strain that's occurring perpendicular to the direction of the load. And you see what happens to our negative signs in the equation. They cancel each other so that the lateral strain is positive. Does this make sense? Well it does. When we apply 25,000 pounds of actual force to the cylinder, we expect that the cylinder will get shorter and the diameter will increase. And we show that because lateral strain is positive, that is consistent with an increase in the diameter dimension. The next step is to calculate the change in the diameter. We previously learned that deflection as a result of strain can be calculated as the normal strain times the original length. That gives us the deflection or the change in length and that can be applied to the diameter. We can calculate the change in the diameter is equal to the lateral strain times the original diameter, which is one inch. And we can calculate the change in diameter to be 1.114 times 10 to the negative third inches. Now we can calculate the new diameter to be the original diameter, one inch plus the change in diameter.
and we get 1.00114 inches. And our problem is done.